Hello everyone and welcome to the back nine of the 2019 PCS Open feature card of round number one. We're gonna pick up on hole number 10, joined by Eagle McMahon again in Eagle. The back nine plays just a bit tougher than the front nine typically, and we start out on a really tough par five. Yeah, this is uh, this is hole 10. It's a par five, 945 feet, 288 meters. This is the longest hole on the course, and um, with Norway's inclement weather, it's going to present uh, present us with some wind, some rain, and um, yeah, uh, well, off the tee. Here I'm throwing a S-line PD2, just trying to put it in, in a landing zone. The, the out-of-bounds definitely can come into the play, but if you're willing to just uh, throw a basic shot, you should be able to put yourself in the fairway. Now, I'm not going to call it a layup, but it seemed like you didn't put everything into it. Avery giving a little bit more power there, but is it safe to say you weren't fully throwing your shot full power? Yeah, I just really want to get in the middle of the fairway since it is such a long hole. Uh, a lot of it is the second shot, so uh, you really don't need to get all you can on uh, a hole like this. And we see Yaron's Heiser stays clean and fights right back to the middle. Not quite to the OB there, but he looks like he's in a good spot. Mm -hmm. Luque is throwing a uh, SDDX here. She gets it up in the wind, but it will be in the fairway. Again, looks like a pretty good shot. Avery's got a little footing to contend with there. Yeah, he's going for the the forehand, flirting with the out of bounds yet again, but uh, he'll find himself safe. We feel some of that headwind, or hear it, I should say, and a few more raindrops finding their way onto my camera at the moment. Safe. Luke going with a more overstable DD3, I believe. Yoran has to contest with uh, this tree right in front of him. And uh, also a tree to the right. And he, he splits them. Just trying to get himself some distance. Looks like a pretty confident shot to go for that the split there. Yeah, I, I can't tell if uh, it was really small gap or the, the camera just made it look <laughs> like that. Right here, I'm going with a Luster C-Line PD2. And out of my hand, I feel like I opened up my hips and pulled it a lot more right than I may have liked. But I am in bounds. Yeah, it looks like you're going to have to contend with some awkward footing as Avery still playing right down the fairway here. So right now, he's just setting himself up for what should be a par 5. Yeah, from where he's at, he's going to just have a short... Uh, putter or um, forehand approach. And Luca also, it looks like everyone's pretty much doing as they're supposed to be doing. I mean, typically you have a little bit of a headwind here. It's almost a thousand feet. There's OB left and right. And it seems like everyone's pretty much dissecting this the way you'd want. For sure. Here, I have a headwind on forehanding. A pretty overstable sea line FD3. And I remember this shot. I got it too high up in the wind, not enough power, uh, but I am just outside the circle with a putt. There's that trick disc by Avery. There's a little bit of a story to that disc, isn't there? Yeah, it's uh, it's an 11 time Firebird. And for for those of you who collect discs or are curious, there is never 11-time Firebird with a first-run stamp, but Avery found a stack of them at the end of a warehouse, and he asked the stamper that day, and he was, they were generous and let him stamp them with uh, first-run Innova stamps. And uh, I know he he really takes those as a, as a, <laughs> one of his prized possessions. That's uh, some of those team hookups when you're in the right place at the right time with one of your sponsors. And as you said, there's a, that's a pretty cool story behind that disc. Actually, I don't know if I could have, if I could say that story. Oh, well, <laughs> oh, well, you know, you know, <laughs> disc golf guy exclusive. Uh-huh. Your secrets out, Avery. <laughs> and you're on uh, now is maybe 
fighting a little bit more work than he was hoping for after that last shot. He's going to go back to the bag. I don't know what kind of magic he thinks he's got in there, but you see the wind picking up and the umbrella that I had and what, you know, any cover everyone else had, they were kind of ramping it up right now because the wind decided to turn up like six notches. Yeah, this, this tournament's in September, and um, this is kind of right at the tail end in summer, which uh, when you're that when you're as far as we are north in Norway, uh, that's going to become a factor, and it's going to get pretty uh, rainy and windy. <laughs> you're a little bit frustrated with yourself. Yeah, I I didn't really I wanted to make the putt of course, but there was a. Uh, some pretty uh, heavy winds blowing. And this location here in Norway, I, I believe is, I know many of our viewers are gonna be from the States, but I believe this location in Norway, put it relative, is just north of Alaska, if you were you know, looking at the globe unless you believe the earth is flat or something. But anyway, <laughs> if you're looking at the globe, uh, it, it's somewhere up in that territory, so to speak, in, in terms of the, what, the latitude, I guess? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's kind of, oh, you're on. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> uh, but yeah, back to what we were saying, it, it is more north than Alaska, or at least I would say um, the capital, Anchorage. Or that's not even the capital. I think it's Juneau. <laughs> uh, I, I might be butchering uh, my geography right now, but you guys know what I mean. Uh, <laughs> on to hole 11, uh, par 3, 282 feet, 86 meters. Uh, plays as somewhat of an island. Um, as you see, the, the ground is kind of hard packed and uh, skips are a factor for this hole. Um, but you can kind of you kind of pick your poison whichever way uh, you feel most comfortable throwing is the way you can go, and for me it happens to be a forehand uh, hyzer with uh, that overstable FD3 I was throwing. No play. And there's the the, the little skip and roll that I was talking about. Um, I would I'm just going to be right on circle's edge right there, just uh, staying safe. So maybe pro tip to put in the caddy book for next year is that you could see coming up a little bit short and kind of playing up to the basket, playing on a skip of sorts. And that seems what Avery just did there. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Luke taking the, the flex forehand. Uh, looked like a pretty good line. It just uh, hit a little too flat. If she would have got some uh, extra hyzer at the end, she would have got a little bit more flare. Joran is putting it up high, stays on the island. Yeah, and this is one of those positions where you're really just looking to try and get up and down uh, and walk away with the three if you're Luca, as she's got that really heavy wind pushing at her back. Yeah, and Joran doesn't really want to even mess around <laughs> with running it. Because he knows if uh, he blows past it, he's going to have a headwind comeback. But right now, I'm facing probably about a, I'd say around a 15 mile per hour or so headwind. I I was very surprised that I, I caught the, <laughs> that high right. But, you know, I'll, I'll take it. Uh, any any birdie right now in uh, these kind of uh, windy, cold conditions uh, is great. Yeah, you move to five under with that as we're heading into this back nine, and Avery's trying to match you with the birdie here. That would put him to three under. So you guys are relatively close so far. And Luke and Joran. <laughs> Luke looks very cold as you're feeling and hearing the wind ripping throughout. Mm -hmm. This is this hole is probably the single most open hole, actually, on the course. This hole and then the previous hole, hole 10. Outside of these two holes, I, I, I'm sorry, I guess hole, you know, maybe 17 and 18 are also pretty open, but these are two of the most open holes we find, and quite a stark contrast from hole 12 here. Yeah, this, this is a, a par four, 433 feet, 125 meters. This one, um, this one is a little bit short for a par a par four, but 
it is very challenging and I really do enjoy the shape of this hole. Uh, a forehand kind of flip, uh, flip up shot that gets him rided Annie is uh, kind of the ideal shot here. I was happy with that shot. It got a little high, kind of hit a tree later in the flight. But if you get a good flex on this hole, um, you can get up there for a look. Oh, yeah. And Avery pulling his S-line PD2 over a little bit too hard. Yeah, he was thank uh, lucky, I should say, to, to just keep it pretty much in the fairway. I feel like you can find a lot of danger and then really get pinched up somewhere or even find out of bounds on this hole if you don't throw a good shot. But Avery's seemed to uh, come down in a decent spot for him. And Jordan's going to be the only backhand we see for this hole. Also the only one with sunglasses right now? Yeah. Um, <laughs> if you if you want to look closely, you'll see that the, they're PCS open sunglasses. So I think he's uh, uh, flexing a little bit right there. <laughs> As he should be. What a just what an incredible effort that these guys have put in to build up this event. Now that it's in its fourth year, we see Luca not quite able to get around the bend there. And Avery's got a good look from here. He's going with another forehand. Mm -hmm. He threw S line PD2 off the tee. Now he's going C line PD2 for his approach shot. And he puts it out of bounds behind the basket was a great looking shot, but it just pushed a little bit too far. A little too much muscle. Joran is forced to throw kind of a low flex forehand from what I can tell from this angle. But he he throws the forehand without the flex. <laughs> it sounds like maybe you need to be in his ear, give him a few yeah, uh, uh -huh. tips and pointers as you guys are. Well, so you... <laughs> a forehand flex is it isn't really the easiest shot if you're not used to it. Um, it's either all hyzer or uh, a forehand roller um, for those who don't get that much practice. But I'm not saying Yorn doesn't practice, but I, that's just what I'm <laughs> assuming. <laughs> He is a busy. He's a busy man. He's a. He owns a construction company. Um, yeah, <laughs> and he he he's a good player nonetheless. I mean, you see him throwing right now and uh, keeping up with uh, keeping up with us. Yeah, and then you see uh, him, uh, Brage and Seifert, uh, just this collection of guys that have really taken disc golf to another level and put it literally in their backyard over here on this property. And Avery's. It, it looked like he had good speed, good height, everything, but just a little too much power again. And now he's now he's looking at a comebacker, and he's doing some real work out here on this par four. Yeah, Thank you. he he gets the bogey. Um, I know he's probably not happy with that, considering it is a 433 foot hole. Uh, kind of, kind of in your head, like yes, you're you're pumped to get the three, you get the birdie, but. Uh, if you get a five, it kind of feels more like a like a bogey or a double bogey and a half. Yeah. Or a bogey and a half, right? So. Yeah, I was going to Moving and, on to hole 13 to par three, 278 feet. Uh, it, it has a, a right to left slope. Kind of the ideal shot is a turnover. You can make a forehand work, but it becomes very tight by the way uh, the trees are on the right side. It's almost because uh, it almost makes it so that you have to throw a super sawed off shot because what you don't see are some of the trees on the left. You can't really hang the forehand, forehand out as wide. Uh, and right there, I kind of go for a more sawed off look. And. Uh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, you're really lining yourself up on the left side of that tee pad too. Yeah, I'm 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 almost falling off the tee pad just so I can get the angle. Good kick. Raga gets a good kick, and I'd like to mention that there is out of bounds on the left side. Uh, kind of the flat spot you see, as soon as it drops off, that's uh, what becomes out of bounds. 
And what looks to be a great angle by Avery, getting both the height and the turn. A little bit too much turn, but he's still pin high looking at a birdie. And although this, you know, comes in at 278 feet, it definitely plays probably closer to three, 325 maybe, at least in terms of power. Yeah, you definitely have to give it, give it a good rip to get up there. Uh, for most, most pro players, they're throwing about a fairway driver. You really have to rip a mid-range super hard to get there. Getting a, a little bit of sun right there. <laughs> we've, we've seen it all throughout this round. Some sun, wind, cold, rain, intermittent rain, a little bit of everything. We didn't see any hail. And hopefully we won't as Avery takes a sweet birdie here. If you want to be treated to some epic views, not only the fjord that you see throughout the round when you're here, but also then the uh, likely rainbows that will follow uh, with all the weather that we see out here. This place definitely set uh, a record for the, the most rainbows I've ever seen. And what's awesome with the fjord is you take a birdie is you can literally see the rainbow from start to finish. It may start in the water all the way up and around and you see the other end. Rarely do you see, you know, the end of the rainbow. I think there's some songs about that, but you see both ends of the rainbow. It's just incredible. Yeah, if you guys are looking for a pot of gold, come to this tournament. <laughs> and we'll talk as the about payouts and how ridiculously uh, amazing they treat everyone in the stout payouts that they have at this event. But first, look at hole 14 par four at 551 feet yeah this this is uh this is a big arms par four uh the way the out of bounds shapes up is uh you you have to carry a lot of distance uh to get over it initially and uh for those who can't throw quite as far you're, they're forced to play more of like a, a turnover shot whereas um bigger arm players can just kind of air something out on a hyzer and get a look for the the birdie You are pushing over the stakes there, so you've easily cleared them. So everything to the right of that line of stakes that you just saw is in bounds. So just imagine there's essentially a big square off on that left side that's considered OB. And so Avery's going over the OB right now, or he's flirting with the edge, but he's going to easily clear it on that back side, uh, just beyond those stakes there. Someone like Uran or possibly... Uh, Luca may have to push more to the right and find the, the landing zone on this right side, and that's exactly what he's doing here. Yeah, his release angle was a lot different than ours. <laughs> he's going to be uh, he's going to be flirting with the out of bounds, but I do believe he did stay safe there. And Luke looks to have this really turned over, but if I recall, it was a pretty overstable disc. Uh, so at the end, it did uh, fight back and bounce. Joran trying to take an Anheuser. He hits a tree and falls. Luke okay. also gets it mm. turned over. And did that stay safe? It does stay safe. Uh, she was flirting with the OB, the OB on that right side there. But I believe it stayed safe for her as Avery's got a you know, and th that's such a difficult shot, and people don't realize till you go out and throw it. To have your legs stretched out that way and to be throwing standstill cro across your body like that, there's just very little power that you can actually generate with that stance. So, And, and the coordination's very tough. And right there, as you see, I tried to avoid it by uh, <laughs> try doing about a, a straddle, a straddle and throwing around my body. Uh, the shot that would be very useful to have there is uh, a little lefty forehand. Uh, shout out to uh, AJ Risley, who's got that on lock. <laughs> Not too many people can just switch it up mid-round like that, but AJ is one of those guys. And speaking of AJ, we've got Avery Jenkins. He's right at circle's edge there, I think, is where we see his mini. Oh, yeah, nice and straight. He's online, but you can tell the wind was messing with him a little bit. Yeah, and I'll be just a little bit closer than Avery. Uh, I'm forced to think about the wind. Uh, with Avery-style putt, uh, with a headwind, 
he's going to have more likelihood to drop, whereas me, with him being more of a spin putter, uh, I'll have more likelihood to raise uh, my disc when I when I'm throwing into the wind. Yeah, and you've seemingly been having your putt pretty much on lock early on, and that was a solid putt right there to walk away with a birdie. Yeah, I'm 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 very happy with my putting right now. Uh, considering the rain, the cold, uh, how stiff how stiff the putter is, uh, usually on days like this, it's kind of uh, you don't really know what you're expecting on the putting green. So, for for what I've been doing, I've been uh, pretty pretty happy. Yeah, you find yourself eight under through 14 holes. Seems to be a pretty solid round to get started. And Avery will tap in and. Right over there, I believe, uh, is uh, Seifert's house. Uh, just beyond there, as we get a quick look, glimpse at the Norwegian flag blowing. And again, just so many epic views while we're out here at this course. Of course, the whole country is amazing, but this property as well. Here we Absol are on 15. Absolutely. We got a par four, 610 feet, 186 meters, and a basket on a tractor. <laughs> Yeah, uh, th th this is a uh, this is an island hole. Uh, at least for the later part of the hole, right here, I'm just taking a forehand shot to put myself in the initial fairway, and from there, uh, I'll have the opportunity to throw a uh, putter, mid-range fairway driver to attack the island. And this, it looks like Avery is going to be oh, no. opting for kind of the same play. Looks like he just gets around that tree. He might. Oh, he's out of bounds. Just barely. And yeah, he, he doesn't realize it at the time. That's why he's asking if there's room up there. But unfortunately, that fairway parallels and is adjacent to hole number 16, the next hole. And Avery, by about three feet, finds himself out of bounds. Oh, Joran looks like he got a. Good low line drive, but at the very end, catches that tree and falls straight down. Yeah, getting past that tree and finding the opening, just as we're seeing Luca do right here, there. like is really the key here. You don't want to be pinched up on that right side and still have a difficult approach. Jordan pulling it a bit too much over. I see a hundred meter mark right there. I don't know if that means a hundred meters to the basket or a hundred meters to uh, maybe another basket that's not there since this is a, a course with many different layouts. But assuming it is, he'll have hundred meters to where he's trying to get to. <laughs> and you hear some noises and uh, of things we may or may not understand. Avery throwing from bringing it just back in bounds. He was OB throwing the forehand out and Come over. On. And he doesn't realize it, but he, he is out of bounds. And as he gets up here in a few moments, I think he's going to see, it looks like he may have busted through the PCS construction banner. And uh, unfortunately, it's going to cost him another stroke. I right hear I'm throwing an exo hard link. Uh, what? <laughs> the standstill, yeah. and then it gets up and it rolls out of bounds on you. That's not. That's just not right. I forgot about that shot until now, and uh, and right there, as you can tell, I am a bit confused <laughs> on what what just happened. And this this is playing as an island, so uh, my last point of exit that I can play from is. Uh, the last part of this initial fairway. So I'm not even going to have a putt for my par. I'm going to be forced to Bring just up. Uh, lay up for a bogey. Oh my gosh, you go from eagle look or almost an eagle throw in to now fighting for your bogey. And Avery also, after going out of bounds, he'll take it from where he was last in bounds uh, besides the island itself. And that's why he throws from there. If you guys guessed, I, d I did some uh, foreshadowing there to what I do. So my apologies. <laughs> well, it uh, 
That is a long approach. I don't know if anybody was expecting you to make that. Although, like I said, your putting's been on lock. Uh, at the beginning of the year, Eagle, I think it's pretty fair to say that we would have never guessed you'd be putting at a basket mounted on top of a trailer overlooking a fjord or a tractor, I should say. <laughs> I mean, if you would have told me that, I would have, uh, I would have definitely been looking forward to that moment. So. <laughs> Well, here we are at the PCS Open. Avery makes a solid putt. We're going to watch Iran tap in for his double bogey. Luca, same thing. And uh, this, it's not quite lunchtime, but this hole just had you guys for lunch, unfortunately. Holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> Little struggle there, but it looks gorgeous. It still belongs on a calendar. We're going to move over to hole 16. Yeah, what we have here is a par 3. 354 feet, 108 meters, uh, kind of a, a, a basic hole, but where it really shines is the green here with all the birches, uh, mossed over rocks. It looks like you're, uh, you're in the Lord of the Rings uh, for this green. And look at the view as I wanted to pan over and have everyone see the mountain, rock side, fjord, all of that in the background, just such an epic a uh, few holes to play and have that as your backdrop. This does play 354 feet, might have a little bit of uphill and throwing this hole you can really tell because uh, it, it takes a bit of a throw to get there. You definitely have to uh, get a good move on it in order to have an opportunity as a bird for a birdie. If you look, um, Myself, Joran, Avery, we're all well short of the basket. Um, so, Luke here is throwing the best line so far. And she actually gets the, the farthest drive of the group. CTP. Now, you, I'm sorry, you were throwing a, a mid or were you throwing a, a fairway by the, on that one? I, w I was throwing a 10-speed driver. I threw a PD, so somewhere in between... Um, uh, a fairway driver and a standard distance driver. Ma mainly because the there there was a bit of a headwind. A little air bounce, nice flip up floaty shot there for Avery. Makes it look so effortless. <laughs> oi, I think is uh, is a yeah. comment that would get thrown out right there. Yep. Oh, oi, oi, oi is something I always hear when I go to Europe. <laughs> Good All right, so no fireworks necessarily here on this gorgeous uh, hole 16. We'll see if we can get some pars. And again, 354 plays all of that, maybe a tad uphill. Oi. Uh, <laughs> but just such a gorgeous hole out on this course. Uh, Jordan. Seems like he's having a, a bit of a hard time at this point. The rest of the card tap, gets to tap in their pars. And we walk up a, a little bit of a hill and we bring ourselves back out into the open for hole 17. Yeah, uh, it's par four, 770 feet, second longest hole in the course, 235 meters. And I really like the way this hole shapes up considering how open it is. Uh, kind of kind of funny, the whole kind of right side of the fairway uh, is inbounds. Then there's this center strip that is hazard. And within that hazard, there's the island where the basket lies. So a very unique shape to this hole. It, it, it makes you think uh, where you need to lay up, uh, how aggressive you want to be. So. Overall, I'm a, I'm a big fan of it. Yeah, it lets you really put a lot into it and give it full power, but if you're a little off your mark like that, you'll get the distance as Avery is, but he finds himself in really what should be better deemed a hazard than OB in that case. But, uh, you know, so there is a risk and a reward. You're definitely trying to put plenty of power onto it, but you still have to be accurate. Luke gets it low, but she will be in the middle of the fairway, safe. Like the... Diora needs to get going. He does clear 
Uh, the right side out of bounds. And off on the left side, as we're going to see these throws come in, is actually uh, way up in the distance, I should say, there was is Brage's house. But on the shorter left side, uh, we actually see the house that you and I are staying at, uh, along with your dad and Tommy and Luca. Yeah, the, we, we are literally staying on the course. Uh, <laughs> and... I'm sure. I'm sure. While the tournament was going on, uh, it got it got hit quite a few times. <laughs> so you essentially just threw out and over and around it, and that is a pretty good shot. That's going to put you on the dance floor. Jordan throws a really great shot from where he was at. Avery in the hazard seems to have it a bit spiked. The left side of the green. Oh, that's um, that's closer than a. Uh, it looked like it was going to be. And if you guys haven't noticed yet, Luke only throws pink discs. <laughs> and she finds herself unfortunately in the hazard there so she takes the distance and doesn't quite connect to save it but uh, yeah i was a little confused i i saw her play at tuni earlier in the year over in uh, finland and i just thought oh, okay well she really likes pink and it didn't hit me until much later that like every disc in her bag was pink mm -hmm. i mean pink's a good color it's uh easy to see it is, and we're looking at, again, this gorgeous backdrop. It's the same backdrop that you see when they're playing, you know, one through four. As we're here, at, I think this is probably the highest point on the course, and you're going to pick up another birdie with just hole 18 to play. So eight under through the front 17 or the first 17, pretty solid. I'll see you. Jordan with just a... Small cleanup here. Oh, it, it, it it's becoming a, a bit of a struggle for Yoren out here. <laughs> uh, he he started pretty strong on, on the front nine, uh, but now it's uh, it seems like uh, uh, the conditions are getting getting to him a bit. Well, to be fair, I I was in his basement at least one of the nights prior to the tournament and. Things were a little rowdy down there, so if, if there's if there's some struggles, uh, I, I feel like I could find exactly where they start when you're here at this tournament. Lots of fun to be had. Let's take a look at 18. Okay, so we got our final hole, 354 feet, with one of the best views of the course, looking at I mean, just the, the, the sea right there, all the mountains in the backdrop. Uh, you, but for this hole, yeah. cool. it's a downhill, right-handed, backhanded hyzer. Um, most people are going to just be taking their, their trusty overstable disc, putting it out there and letting it fade into the green. Another camera op, as Avery says, this is the photo card. I mean, you guys stopped two or three times throughout the round. I mean, not only do you have yourself and Avery, two of the best players to ever play disc golf, but... Uh, have these great promoters, ambassadors, just everyone together. What a what a fun feature card to get things started. And this is a mid range, isn't it? Off the tee, looks like you need a little more power. Yeah, I, I threw that line in practice and it was it was good, but uh, I just don't throw it hard enough. Uh, what Avery does here, he throws a driver and he gets that extra speed. Probably would have been a good idea for me, but for some reason. Uh, it just it just didn't feel right. You got you got to go with what feels good sometimes, and uh, that's why I went with a mid. Well, someone like yourself at 354 feet downhill, I'm sure I can understand how you're worried about possibly throwing it too far and too hard, and then finding an OB road or or an OB <laughs> hot tub or something. <laughs> so I could understand why you're you know pulling back just a little bit. Luke has a DD3 in her hand. And she just gets over that wall and she oh. is 
pretty much parked. Wow, great final drive here in this opening round. I'm forced to think about my upshot here. I actually had to run down and grab the disc I threw from the tee pad uh, for that approach shot. Uh, it, was, it was the most overstable approach disc I had in my bag, and I, I needed it. You're on. Puts himself onto the green. And a solid putt. Not quite the finish you were looking for, but a solid putt nonetheless. Avery, who's fallen back just a little bit, he's trying to put himself to one under to close things out. Yeah, kind of a, a roller coaster for Avery. He had a, a lot of great shots, but kind of struggled at certain points. Uh, everyone on the card definitely uh, had some times where the didn't seem like they could figure things out, but... <laughs> Yeah, it's the opening round. So I want to thank everyone. Uh, Leif was out there. Well, he not only did some of the drone camera work ahead of time, but also was catch cam uh, during rounds uh, three and three and a half, I should say. Uh, everyone that helped out. Uh, Seifert, Brage, uh, Yaron, just the entire crew uh, was pretty incredible. So you guys are going to get together for another picture, and we'll see you in round three.